ladies and gentlemen, my next guests tonight are the Pulitzer Prize winning journalists who broke the Harvey Weinstein story for the New York Times. Their new book about that and the revolutionary Me Too movement that followed it is called She Said. Please welcome Jody Cantor and Megan Toohey. <laughs> Thanks for being here. We're thrilled to be here. Um, I have followed your work closely, especially the last couple of years, and um, I'm really looking forward to your book, some of which I have read already. It's called She Said, and um, it's about breaking the sexual harassment story that helped ignite a movement. Uh, you both won the Pulitzer Prize in 2018, um, not for investigative reporting, but for public service, which is the best Pulitzer Prize, right? That is the best. <laughs> Is that the best one? It meant a lot to us. <laughs> it's the best one. Um, it, it, this, this, this reporting that you did, I'm, just to remind everybody, it ignited a, a, a movement, uh, a, a change in our culture, and had ramifications across not only Harvey Weinstein's industry, but across many, and in, in many people's lives. When you went to publish that original article, did you know what was coming in its wake? We, we had no idea. All we knew at the New York Times in 2017 was that we were committed to investigating sexual harassment across a variety of industries, from Hollywood to, the, to Silicon Valley, to the restaurant industry, and even the auto plants. But we had no idea what the impact of those investigations were gonna be whatsoever. Um, th this book now is being called on, on All the President's Men of the Me Too Era. Um, a, who's going to be played by Robert Redford? And, <laughs> and B, why tell the story behind the story you told? Because these stories have come to mean so much to so many people, we wanted to bring everybody else with us on this journey. First of all, a lot of what originally happened in this investigation was off the record. So we needed to go back and find a way to share those secrets and to bring people through the process and, and really show you what we witnessed, bring you into our partnership, have you there in our, our office during the final confrontations with Harvey Weinstein. And also we wanted to push further because the initial investigation showed a piece of the puzzle but there were so many unanswered questions. How could a company, the Weinstein Company, become so complicit in abuse, for example? That, that's a story about the Weinstein Company, but it's also a story about all of our workplaces. If you see some sort of wrongdoing in your workplace, what do you do? Well, tell me about the final confrontations with Harvey Weinstein. What kind of intimidation did he and, I assume, the company bring to bear against you guys? Well, he amassed a group of high-powered lawyers who were going to threaten us with a lawsuit if we went forward with our story. He hired a private investigative firm made up of former Israeli intelligence officials that were promised $300,000 if they put a stop to our investigation. And in the 11th hour, as we were preparing to publish, Harvey Weinstein basically barged into the New York Times himself, surrounded by some of his lawyers and folders with information that he was hoping to use to smear his accusers. Well, we're, we're coming up, this was in October of 2017, right? So we're coming up on, on a two-year anniversary of the publication of this story and the, the igniting of the Me Too movement. Now, the hashtag Me Too and that idea existed beforehand, but this really um, uh, amplified it and it became a national movement. Some people say that it's gone too far, that some people get swept up in the desire to change the culture and sexual dynamics, uh, certainly in the workplace, and that there have been casualties along the way that has gone too far. What do you make of those assessments? What we've seen in our reporting is that there's a kind of mounting sense of unfairness on both sides. And actually, I don't think anybody feels that our system works for the accused 
or the accusers. Basically, there are three questions about Me Too that remain totally unresolved. One is, what is the scope of the behaviors under scrutiny? Are we only talking about really severe cases of sexual assault, rape, or is this also about bad dates? Uh, second of all, how do we get the facts right? How do we get to the bottom of what really happened? What kind of information do we trust and not trust in trying to figure out what happened? And then the third is, what should punishment or accountability look like? And all three of those questions are really controversial. Mm -hmm. and, and the answers to all three are? I, I mean, <laughs> clearly, we're going to settle this right, right here exactly. right now. Before the commercial break I mean, right now. Look, the contribution that we can make is that we're journalists, and you can't solve a problem you can't see, and well, we, we will keep reporting so that we can report the true history of what really happened. Well, you, you are a journalist, and you talk about that in terms of your need to actually know in response to the idea that is um, a very well-meaning one that I think has very, uh, very a positive effect overall, which is believe women. But you point out that as journalists, you've got a different attitude toward believing. What, what, what is the, the motto that one of your colleagues has on his desk? Well, you know, actually, one of my reporters, I got my start at a newspaper in Wisconsin, and my editor used to have a saying pinned to, over his desk, which was, if your mother tells you she loves you, check it out, um, <laughs> which, I think, which I think speaks to at least what we as reporters apply to all of the work that we do when it comes to reporting allegations of any kind. I mean, we really apply a very rigorous process of corroboration and due diligence and, you know, even in the end, going to the accusers, mm -hmm. excuse me, to the accused to make sure that they have adequate time to respond so that we can ensure, ensure accuracy and fairness. Even when it involves, like, Harvey Weinstein bar barging into the New York Times, we're going to go through that process to make sure that we're producing airtight stories. We have to take a little bit of a break. Uh, we'll be right back with more of Jody Cantor and Megan Toohey. We'll talk about where we go from here. <laughs> 